Welcome to the lesson on the resuscitation team. In this video, we'll review what makes up a resuscitation team and their roles as team members. The AHA guidelines for ACLS highlight the importance of effective team dynamics during resuscitation. In the community, that is, outside a healthcare facility, the first rescuer on the scene may be performing CPR alone. However, a code blue in a hospital may bring dozens of responders or providers to a patient's room. It's important to quickly and efficiently organize team members to effectively participate in ACLS. The AHA suggests a team structure with each provider assuming a specific role during resuscitation. This consists of a team leader and several team members. As a team leader, you should organize the group, monitor performance, be able to perform all the skills, direct team members, and provide critique of group performance after the resuscitation effort. As a team member, you should understand your role clearly, be willing, able, and skilled to perform your role, understand the PALS sequences, and be committed to the success of the team. Clear communication between team leaders and team members is essential. It's important to know your own clinical limitations. Resuscitation is the time for implementing acquired skills, not trying new ones. Only take on tasks you can perform successfully. Clearly state when you need help and call for help early in the care of the individual. Resuscitation demands mutual respect, knowledge sharing, constructive criticism, and follow-up discussion or debriefing after the event. Refer to figure 18 in your corresponding ACLS manual for a brief timeline of communication between team leader and team member during resuscitation. This concludes our lesson on the resuscitation team. Next, we'll review education, implementation, and teams.